Hey everyone, you're a soul here, and yet another story here about Facebook's basic failure to protect their users' privacy and data. Uh, we have seen many cases of this over the years. This one seems to be possibly the largest in terms of the number of people affected. The short version here is that 400 million potentially records relating to Facebook users became available somewhere on the internet. I'm not actually sure where they became available. They haven't released that information in this TechCrunch piece or in the Forbes piece that I've read on this subject. I do know that if you go onto certain BitTorrent sites, you'll see older hacks from Facebook offering allegedly 100 million profile records. I haven't gone into the length of trying to find this one, but basically they're saying 400 million plus records including usernames some physically usable recognizable information um and phone numbers uh so facebook is saying this information is actually from an old data leak and it was found apparently somewhere online in a database that wasn't password protected and then you know basically doing everything they can to limit the damage caused by this story and they're even going as far as saying oh no it was only 220 million records <laughs> oh well that's all right then only 220 million that's that's a tiny number isn't it so even if they're right about that which we don't know if they are or they aren't um that certainly isn't uh, a good thing anyway and they're claiming that it was due to data duplication but this researcher that they quote here who did look at this database basically said, no, there wasn't that much duplication in there. There is much closer to 400 million records. So what does this actually mean? Well, they're, they're saying that, as you can see, here's some examples of the um, database records in there. Basically saying that prior to the Cambridge Analytica scandal, which you can read about many places online where Facebook effectively allowed a large number of records to be accessed by a research company uh, officially allowed them to do it and then they basically found that they had access to the friends also of those people that they allowed access to who had volunteered their information they actually this company was allowed access to their friends information as well so they ended up with millions of people's uh, data which they then used uh, along the way to basically got used to facilitate political advertising and manipulation which was in no way the correct use or agreed upon use for that data so the short version is that basically facebook has made agreement with all kinds of people to have access to your private information on facebook without telling you um, and that's then being used for nefarious reasons and that's just one example that we know of who knows how many other examples there are obviously given that if this continued to be leaked out these kinds of stories into the media then people gradually would stop using Facebook, which they probably should. And so therefore, any company or group having access to that information, uh, for whatever reason, legally or illegally, would not want you to know that they have it, because they know that the more you know that they have it, the less likely you are to be on there and the less useful their data becomes. So everyone invested in this has an interest in you not knowing that they are invested in it. So it's really a huge problem. And I would say that uh, really the only solution there is for the average person in this situation is to do your best to support only platforms that don't ever even remotely do things like this. So, for example, to my knowledge anyway, Steam, the blockchain, sites associated with that generally don't do that. My site, Eureka.org, doesn't do that. doesn't even require you to give me a phone number to use the site. Um, basically, you, it has an absolute bare minimum requirement for your information and really i have no way of even proving you're a human being or uh you know who you are in real life as a result of the information you give me on that site and those are the kind of sites i would suggest you you use because then there is no possible way for your data to be sold on or manipulated ultimately very minimally um you know the private posts that you make could potentially be sold on by sites like mine but I don't do that and I have no agreement with anyone to do that. I have no motive to do that. Uh, you know, I don't need a huge amount of money to keep that site running and don't need to, and I'm not tempted to sell out the world to rich people who are going to manipulate them. That's actually the complete opposite of the point of my website. So what could actually happen as a result of what's occurred here? Well, they give an example of how the Twitter CEO's account basically got hacked as a result of someone using a mobile phone SIM card hijack. 
uh, which as I understand it, not being a hacker or specialist in that, ultimately revolves around someone getting access to his phone number and then using technology to kind of fake his SIM so that uh, it appears when they use the mobile network that they're using his phone. And then they can just reset his password and get into all his accounts. That's just one reason why it's very important that people's social accounts aren't associated with a phone number publicly. And previously, in fact, Facebook had a feature active where you could even search for people by their phone number. So that automatically means that you don't even need a, a leak to take place. <laughs> you could just find out the phone number for a large number of people anyway on Facebook. So aside from you know, these SIM swapping attacks where people actually gain access to people's accounts through having that information, there's a whole long list of other things they can do once they know who you are, your name, address, your phone number, um, maybe not even your address, uh, just through having your phone number and your name. There's quite a lot you can do, isn't there? I mean, you can phone up all kinds of companies, get your um, details changed in many cases. You can social engineer people by phoning them up and lying to them, basically, and giving them information that, you know, they don't expect you to have because they think the only companies they've given it to would have it. So you could pretend to be Facebook, for example. Uh, the short version of this is there's no, there's nothing good about all of this, obviously. So definitely please do consider not using Facebook and sites like that. and. Big corporate sites, you know, associated with alphabet agencies and governments behind the scenes, allegedly there to protect you and keep you safe, whereas in reality they are very often the ones not doing that. Just go and find that sites that, that don't do those things, basically, of which there are a variety available. And if you're still not convinced, then I would suggest taking a look at Richard Stallman's website. Richard Stallman was one of the inventors of the GNU slash Linux operating system that now runs a massive number of computers around the world, um, business websites, servers, you name it. Um, really a huge figure in the world of computing. Not so well known because he's not uh, a huge capitalist like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, but I would say he's more on the side of humanity and probably more intelligent than both of them put together. Uh, so he's got this site, very simple looking site here, and he's got a page about all these different companies and why you shouldn't use them. And this has grown quite a lot since I last looked at it. But um, this page about Facebook, you can see it's very long. And it basically gives you very good reasons. These are all good reasons not to use Facebook. And they're quite shocking. And most people probably haven't even heard of this stuff. So, you know, the, the, the blatant bias uh, regarding violence posts and their censorship and the way they collect data from people and force them to provide their passports, that kind of thing. Just goes on and on and on, and these are all examples of real world stories that you can check out and that are real, which make Facebook look very, very bad. And there's a very long list of them. And you know, this isn't his full time job, this is just something he adds on here from time to time. So you can bet there's a whole bunch more massive stories to look into as well. And if you've got time, definitely go and check out these other ones. I mean, you've got Google, LinkedIn, Microsoft, uh, Skype, which is also Microsoft, Twitter. Uh, Amazon, Airbnb, all these big tech companies, Apple, Discord even. I'll have to have a look at that in a minute. I haven't looked at that yet. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, I don't use any of these if I can avoid them, and most of the time I can avoid them, other than Discord. Uh, and I do use Facebook a bit, talking to people, but it's bare minimum. I'm just using it most of the time to uh, try to drive people away from Facebook. So <laughs> uh, I don't consider that a misuse of it or a problem. Generally speaking, you know, there's something we can do so much better. And number one, we can use alternative services, as I mentioned, like the Steam blockchain. Minds.com is pretty good. Eureka.org, my site, combined Steam and features that you'll find on Minds as well. Uh, and there's alternatives for a lot of these. Uh, EOS, the blockchain, has alternatives coming up, I believe, for Airbnb uh, and Uber, and so do other blockchains. Google is the big one, which is hard to, oh, and also Intel, hard to replace at this point because they use so much hardware and it really is going to require us to dr drastically change how computing operates for us to replace those companies. But uh, it can be done and to open source hardware, maybe 3D printing, maybe just a competitor to Intel that isn't uh, so problematic. Ultimately, any company that manages large amounts of information is going to be targeted for manipulation. And even if the people running it originally were good people who would never do that, uh, you know, once they grow beyond a certain size, they're forced to hire more and more people. And then it becomes very difficult for them to prevent people filtering their way up to the tops of the companies in positions of responsibility who are corrupted, basically. So, 
you know, this isn't necessarily a situation of pointing the finger at individuals that we can highlight a lot of the time, although often we can. Uh, often it's just the, the nature of corporate structures and, you know, that in itself needs to be addressed in some way, I would say. And the model pr that's in use and being developed on the EOS blockchain at the moment, DAC, DAC, Digital Autonomous Community or Corporation, it looks to be one interesting way to sort of solve this problem to some extent, which is beyond the scope of this video, but the short version is it's literally a way of replacing the entire corporate structure, running it on a blockchain, so that shareholders in the company and people who are active in the project get to see a huge amount of information about the whole process and it's a lot more transparent than the average corporation so yeah that's that's one option uh, beyond that i guess it would be decentralized even more and don't even have these big corporations just have smaller groups of people working together who are more able to monitor each other and keep everything rolling within integrity so if you've liked this video if you found this helpful these links really again life-changing links world-changing links if you follow them through and read them through and pass them on gradually we can chip away at the uh, enslavement of humanity that's been occurring for a very long time very well planned out very well organized for over 100 years by certain groups behind the scenes who probably aren't the groups that you've been told they are either um, if you found this useful then please do give it a like and upvote a re-steam a re-blog and Share along on other platforms. If you're on YouTube, please hit the notification bell to receive regular notifications for my channel. And let me know what you think about all this. If you've got any more info to add as well, definitely in the comments. Until next time, peace.